Thanks and good day, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to first introduce myself. My name is Yusrina Mat Yusuf. I am the Senior Manager for Spectrum Planning, Numbering and Technology under Digital Connectivity Group. I have been working with the Authority for Info Communications Technology Industry for Brunei Darussalam AITI for 14 years, and I'm honoured to be representing Brunei Darussalam at this 11th ASEAN Connectivity Forum and share with you Brunei Darussalam's journey towards 5G. So let's get started. I will share with you the outline of the presentation to sort of set your expectations. So first and foremost, I will give a short intro to Brunei Darussalam's profile or so-called biodata to help paint a picture of the environment in Brunei Darussalam. So we are located on the island of Borneo, sandwiched between Malaysian states. Uh, we are only 5,765 kilometers squared and our population is just shy of half a million with 452,524 people. As for telecommunication landscape, since 2020, we have had a single wholesale network where previous operators' assets were consolidated into one, becoming an entity known as Unified National, National Networks. There are three fixed and mobile operators known as Data Stream Digital, Imagine, and Progressive. So... Connectivity continues to play a vital role in the way people live and businesses operate. Digital services underpinned by high-speed telecommunication networks are set to become more integral to society in a post-COVID-19 pandemic world. In 2022, communication services contributed to 364.1 million million Brunei dollars to the nation's GDP. There are also indirect significant GDP effects, which suggest that overall, a 10% increase in mobile or fixed infrastructure results in increases in economic growth ranging from 0.5% to 2%, according to study done by the International Telecommunication Union, ITU. Over the years, AITI has seen notable growth of subscribers, both for fixed and mobile telecommunication services. For example, the fixed line telephony subscribers have increased from 74,000 in 2016 to 122,000 in 2022. Similarly, fixed broadband subscribers also grew from 36,000 in 2016 to 90,000 in 2022. While mobile penetration has reached saturation point, there is still an increase from 520,000 subscribers in 2016 to 600,000 subscribers in 2021. So since mobile communication was first introduced in Brunei Darussalam by Jabatan Telecom Brunei JTB in 1989, using the advanced mobile phone system, AMPS, it has changed the way we communicate dramatically as opposed to the alternative fixed line telephone. The evolution of mobile technology in Brunei Darussalam has seen improvement through the years with the introduction of Global System for Mobile Communication, GSM, in 1995 by Data Stream Technologies Nern Berhad, DST. As technology advances, the government of Brunei Darussalam commenced a restructuring of the telecoms industry, which chart the journey towards the corporatization of JTB. The Telecommunications Successor Company Order 2001 transfers all property, rights and liabilities belonging to JTB to Telecom Brunei Limited, Telbru, whereby Telbru assumed the role of service provider in place of the JTB. The AITI Order 2001 establishes the Authority for Info Communications Technology Industry of Brunei Darussalam AITI as an independent statutory body to regulate the local ICT industry. This order took effect on 1st January 2003. Furthermore, the development of the telecommunication industry led to the creation of B-Mobile in 2005. They were granted a license to operate 3G network with features such as video calls and mobile internet. And in 2014, the National Broadband Policy, NBP, was developed which sets out the government's overarching policy initiatives and goals for the development of the broadband sector over the next four years, between 2014 to 2017. The policy addresses key issues such as accessibility, affordability, quality and adoption. 
The NBP facilitates new mobile technology deployment, providing better and faster experience for video streaming and smartphone applications via the introduction of 4G technology in 2014. In 2016, the National ICT White Paper was commissioned to set the strategic direction for ICT in Brunei Darussalam for 2016 to 2020, with strategic outcomes, a vibrant economy powered by ICT, ICT smart citizens, and a connected and capable nation. In 2019, we saw a major transformation in the information and telecommunications technology, information and communications technology ICT sector, whereby the network infrastructure is now delivered by UNN with data stream digital imagined and progressive, providing competitive fixed and mobile services to customers. In 2020, the government's Digital Economy Council has first launched its five, first five year master plan and outlined strategies for Brunei to become a smart nation that has a digital and future-ready society, vibrant and sustainable economy, as well as a conducive digital ecosystem. Furthermore, there is ongoing effort to revise ICT legislation, such as AITI and telecommunications order, as well as enacting new personal data protection order. And by 2023, earlier this year, Brunei has gone 5G. Move on to the Digital Economy Council. So the Digital Economy Council was formed to take over the roles of Brunei Darussalam National ICT Council, Big Council, and the E-Government Leadership Forum, EGLF, in providing the direction and steer on digital economy initiatives for Brunei Darussalam. The Digital Economy Council launched the Digital Economy Master Plan 2025 in June 2020, with the vision of Smart Nation Through Digital Transformation and mission to drive and enhance Brunei Darussalam's socio-economic growth through digital transformation. The Digital Economy Master Plan 2025 is intended to support the objectives of Brunei Darussalam's Vision 2035, which includes high quality of life, highly educated and skilled workforce, and a sustainable and dynamic economy. So guided by the Makassit Sharia, the Digital Economy Master Plan 2025 has the following strategic objectives, vibrant and sustainable economy, digital and future ready society, and digitally conducive ecosystem. In addition, four strategic thrusts have been identified to support the mission and vision of the Digital Economy Master Plan 2025, namely, first, industry digitalization. This, this strategic Trust, among others, focuses on the need to evaluate the readiness of stakeholders to adopt IR 4.0 technologies and to undertake a comprehensive awareness program, especially for macro, small, and medium enterprises, MSMEs. Government digitalization, this strategic trust, emphasize on the important role of government in facilitating economic growth among the focused areas which are emphasized are the implementation of a digital identity ecosystem, innovation of public experience, and involvement of cloud usage. Third, a thriving digital industry. The ICT sector needs to emphasize on the application of technologies to nurture and sustain growth for improvement of local, digital, and other sectors. And lastly, man manpower and talent development. Manpower needs to be equipped with the capabilities required in line with the rapid advancement in technology. With the Digital Economy Master Plan 2025, the Digital Economy Council will focus on the implementation of key projects under the 10 priority clusters, which are expected to have a significant impact on economic growth through the implementation of digital transformation. The clusters are logistics and transportation, energy, business services, tourism, financial services, health, agro-food, education, halal, and construction. To support in realizing the outcomes outlined in Digital Economy Master Plan 2025, AITI has developed a five-year strategic plan with a vision to turn Brunei Darussalam into a connected smart nation. The strategic plan focuses notably on the developing the digital industry to a new level, highlighting the importance of conducive regulatory environment and digital infrastructure that enables the nation's needs for ubiquitous connectivity and emphasizing on a better future for its people and society at large. It also defines the strategic key performance indicators under each pillar and enabler in order for AITI to stay focused and achieve measurable outcomes through its journey in executing the plan.
Among the targets highlighted under AITI strategic plan are the digitalization of MSMEs, facilitate the development of digital businesses and ensuring readiness of 5G rollout. So we now move on to the sharing session on our journey towards 5G. So while this year marks the beginning of a new decade of 5G evolution in Brunei, AITI has been preparing for the adoption of 5G since 2018. As an early stage initiative towards 5G technology, AITI has worked with the International Telecommunication Union, ITU, on the assessment of market readiness for future IMT networks in March 2018. In 2019, AITI then conducted a desktop study on the coexistence between 5G and existing VSAT users in, in 3.5 gigahertz to ensure this band can be utilized in Brunei Darussalam. Based on the outcome from these two activities, AITI released a public consultation paper to seek input from potential stakeholders on development of 5G plan of action. Following AITI's public consultation, feedback received from stakeholders highlighted the need for the establishment of 5G task force to foster 5G ecosystem among national stakeholders. Therefore, in 2020, 5G task force was formed with about 60 key working group members and commenced its 12-month work looking into policy regulatory and spectrum, use case applications and infrastructure and education and awareness. A year later, 5G pilot project was launched together with the handover ceremony for the 5G task force in April 2021. The pilot project was aimed to demonstrate 5G proof of concept network environments. So to unlock the benefits of mobile connectivity, as well as new opportunities to drive economic growth and innovation towards achieving national aspiration of Wawasan Brunei 2035, the 5G Task Force recommended five strategies as follows. First, telecommunications as utility. Second, readily available spectrum resources. Third, timely technology and infrastructure deployment. Fourth, spur commercial 5G use cases. And five, enhance awareness and capacity building. After the task force completed their work, AITI selected some of the action items for the purpose of exploring what kind of collaboration models work best among the key stakeholders, both government and industry, as well as what mechanism can help maximize impact of our expected outcome. In recognizing that as technology evolves, particularly a technology as disruptive as 5G, there is also a need for the society in general to upgrade themselves and how we go about doing our work to facilitate digital transformation. Among activities that were selected include capacity development, pilot project, regulations, awareness, and collaboration for 5G Lab, some of which I will elaborate further following slides. So the 5G pilot project is deployed as commissioned by the Ministry of Transport and Info Communications and spearheaded by AITI with involvement from telecommunications infrastructure and service providers, as well as various industry stakeholders and players with the aim to demonstrate 5G proof of concept network environments. AITI collaborated with Academia, University Technology Brunei, UTB, in setting up 5G Lab on a small scale for now. AITI also conducted, um, collaborated with a local company to conduct a capacity building upskilling program uh, where it was 100% subsidized with certain conditions and the courses offered include fundamentals of 5G, 5G mobile networks, telecommunication basics, emerging technologies, and 5G technologies and application. A, small, a total of 55 participants took part in the upskilling program. Collaboration with Brunei Innovation Lab aimed at enhancing awareness, education, and use case scenarios for 5G development. And in September 2022, AITI completed amendment of the telecommunication radio communication regulations, allowing new spectrum bands below 7 gigahertz to be readily available and utilized for mobile technology, including 5G. 
Prior to 5G launching, a commercial trial was conducted over a period of up to eight weeks. The trial allowed UNN and the service providers to receive and evaluate valuable feedback from trial participants and facilitate end-to-end -end network and process optimization to achieve a satisfactory and successful launch. And by June 2023, 5G services was launched. 90% of populated areas have access that are 5G ready with ongoing efforts to improve nationwide coverage. 5G in Brunei Darussalam is non standalone with the coverage running on 3.5 GHz, 1800 MHz, and 700 MHz band. So, 5G revolution is a generational upgrade in telecommunications that will fundamentally alter the way in which technology is integrated into our everyday lives. As we enter into the fourth industrial revolution, technologies such as big data, artificial intelligence, the internet of things will provide new opportunities for us to drive economic growth and innovation for our nation. In closing, I wish to also share some of AATI other initiatives in collaboration with Department of Fisheries and the Department of Agriculture Culture and Agrofood under Ministry of Primary Resources and Tourism. So in 2021, AITI collaborated with Department of Fisheries on Smart Aqua Farm Pilot Project to encourage the development of data analytics solutions by local ICT businesses. Real-time data were collected measuring water quality of giant prawn, both indoor and outdoor. In 2022, AITI collaborated with Department of Agriculture and Agri-Food to promote the adoption of data analytics towards building a local data industry. Real-time data are being collected measuring key parameters such as temperature and humidity of greenhouse as well as soil quantity, quality. And with that, I conclude my presentation.